Welcome to our Emmy Slugfest. It's Rob LaCuria and Chris Beecham. We've been doing these for years and years. We're calling this one since it's uh, 26 categories this year on the Emmys, Rob. It's going to be 26 categories predicted in 26 minutes. We're going to fly through some of them. That's going to allow us a little more time on some of the other ones. But uh, overall, are you happy with the, uh, the overall nominations? Yeah, I am. I think it's a very good year for the Emmys. I think they did a very good job um, with what they chose. So obviously, there's some, always some, something that misses out, but I was happy with what happened at the Creative Arts Emmys on, over the weekend, and I'm very excited about Primetime Emmy Night. Very, very excited. Well, you kick us off with comedy series. We'll go through all the comedy categories first. Okay, so comedy series for me is unfortunately quite difficult because I just cannot make up my mind between Mrs. Maisel and Atlanta. I'm going with Atlanta for the time being, and I think I'm just going to leave it there and just write it out. What about you? Well, they both won three last weekend, so that doesn't help us a bit, does it? Um, I've had I've, I've, this is one category where I have switched back and forth and back and forth. I'm ultimately going with Maisel, and the only reason why being I just think it's more accessible. I, I, I could see some people not even getting Atlanta. Um, I think Maisel is just, you know, it's a 50 show, stand-up comedy, New York City. Um, I just think it's more accessible to the average voter who's going to be in their 40s, 50s and above. Well, wow. I mean, Netflix will be quite unhappy if, it, if um, Amazon can take a series category after Hulu did last year as well. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. And then uh, comedy, well, this one won't take long. Comedy actress, I think it's one of maybe five locks of the night. And when I say lock, I mean 100%, not 90%. But this one's this one's an easy one, right? Yeah, I mean, this is Rachel Brosnahan. Um, we've talked about her before. She just ticks every box. And and I'm really looking forward to seeing her up on, on the Emmy stage, collecting her Emmy. Lead actor, though, is a little tougher, I think. A lot of people, uh, Marcus thinks Donald Glover's easily got it but i think bill Hader's right not really close but sort of in the mix um and well no, i think he's more in the mix and then maybe ted danson could could surprise everybody yeah i think all three of those actually have a shot too and and people shouldn't discount ted danson he's an emmy legend i'm going with donald glover i thought i'd just go with atlanta and donald glover as kind of like a little pair uh i think it, they will probably both um triumph on any night, but this one's a tough one. I I do have Donald Glover as well. I've gone back and forth on this one a little bit. We talk about it, Oscars and Emmys, especially the transformative role, and that's not the case for most of the this season, but the episode he submitted, should they choose to watch it, is complete transformation. They don't even credit him in the closing or opening credits as playing that uh, character of Teddy Perkins. Yeah, it's amazing. So I, I'm, I'm hoping he wins. Supporting um, uh, actress? Yeah, I'm going on the, with the lazy vote on this one. There's eight um, people to choose from, and I think just Kate McKinnon will be someone that a lot of Emmy voters will just tick off automatically. I know Alex Borstein, a lot of people have her um, in the lead, and even Laurie Metcalf from Roseanne, which is kind of like kryptonite at the moment. No one wants to touch that. But everyone loves her, and she's been winning quite a lot of awards lately. She's had an Oscar nomination. She's very popular at the Tonys. She could win too. Even Zazie Beats, you know, like this one's this one's not too um, easy to predict. But I'm going with Kate McKinnon as the lazy vote. Well, I've had Alex Borstein for a while, just thinking along those lines and thinking, um, you know, she had the two nominations. Sometimes a person with two nominations. Uh, and acting is going to win one of them. But then she won voiceover, which I actually was predicting. I don't know if she's going to win two. That's my problem. You and I always talk about if you've got a front runner, which Kate McKinnon being the reigning two-time champ would be considered a front runner, they're better off winning, easy, winning easier if there's not a consensus around who's in second place. And the yeah. fact that you just named half the category. And Megan Mullally, we can't write off either. She's won right. twice for this role. Um, that might help Kate McKinnon. I might switch there because I don't know if Alex is going to win twice. And they like Saturday Night Live at the Creative Arts even more than Maisel. Oh, absolutely. And let's also remember, I know the voting is different these days, but we can we could see another Merritt Weaver type win where someone just comes out of nowhere, like Betty Gilpin could win, for example. Like nothing would surprise me at the Emmys anymore, although this is really a pull that plu rap plurality, I can't even say the word, and popular vote. And that's why I think Kate McKinnon will probably just, just eke it out. Supporting actor? 
Well, I think supporting act is going to give us one of the greatest um, Emmy moments of the night and for, for, for years when we see Henry Winkler finally take home an Emmy. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, this one's not too hard, easy to predict as well. Uh, maybe you might want to say he's a lock, but I think Louis Anderson, Tony Shalhoub, um, Brian Tyree Henry, they all have a, a chance, but I'm going with Henry Winkler and I'm really hoping that it happens. You've said everything I wanted to say. I, there's, this is the one out of the 26 I want to happen the most. So even though I agree that, that there's several possibilities here, and now watch it be Alec Baldwin for doing nothing, uh, <laughs> just, just a lazy repeat vote. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think there isn't really a front runner, although Henry Winkler's at the top of our odds, but I think, I think it's seeped out into the world that he has never won before, par partially due to us, you yeah. and me and Gold Derby and everybody. So I'm hoping that's going to help him. And you can't find a more likable guy. So I, uh, really, a lot of people in this category are very likable. OK, what about writing on a comedy? Um, I think we're finally going to see Amy Sherman Palladino win an Emmy after all those um, snubs from her Gilmore Girls days. I think she's actually going to win for the pilot. And the only, uh, I think, the only other chance he could be any of those Atlanta or Barry uh, submissions, but because there's double submissions from both shows, I think this one's going to be quite an easier run for Palladino finally. What about you? Yeah, I think so. And by the way, she did get an Emmy this weekend. She was one of the music uh, nominees for music direction, in which they won. So right. uh, she, she did get her first, although she wasn't there. They're shooting in New York. Um, yeah, I think that the vote splitting here is going to be real because there's no obvious choice for Atlanta or Barry. And then Maisel's sitting there with the pilot. Now, Barry does have the pilot, but I don't think anybody that watched Barry thought that that was the best episode So uh, among, their, among their group. So I think this one's pretty easy. I think it's Maisel. What about directing? Directing is tougher for me because you could make the same argument for Maisel. You could also say for Barry that it only has one episode submitted in this or uh, nominated in this category. And this could be the one that Barry actually wins. But um, I just cannot seem to go past... Teddy Perkins, the Teddy Perkins episode of Atlanta. I just think it was so special and different and unusual. And it's something that I think the Emmys will absolutely go for, just like they did last year. What about you? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. We talked about vote splitting on writing, but here there is an obvious choice if you want to go Atlanta. And that's why I think they'll go Teddy Perkins. And um, I just can't think about also, uh, I know Maisel could win that. I think that's probably in second place. But they won a lot of awards back in first of the year. The Guild Awards, they won Producers Guild. They won Writers Guild. The one award she could not pick up was Directors Guild. So, and only directors vote in this, and I think that told us a little something. Now, Atlanta wasn't eligible for that. Uh, they had taken a cycle off from, from that particular, they weren't eligible for Globes or SAG or anything. But mm -hmm. uh, here they are competing, and I think it's gonna be even tougher for her to win against, uh, against Teddy Perkins. Okay, well, let's jump to, why don't we do, there's only one reality um, yeah. uh, category, so let's do that next. Okay, well, listen, I'm very, I'm, I'm hoping to God that um, RuPaul's drag, drag Race wins the reality competition program category. Number one, because it should have won last year and The Voice took it. And number two, because RuPaul was so kind to Gold Derby uh, the other day, as you well know, because she was talking to you um, backstage at the Emmys. And oh, I just think that that was a, such a wonderful moment. And I wanted to see RuPaul up on that stage, making me laugh again. Yeah, everybody find that video if you haven't watched it. She talks about Gold <laughs> Derby the first three minutes out of the seven she's on stage. It's so very, funny. very funny you know, through the whole seven something minutes. So I'm torn here. I. I went with them last year thinking they would yeah. finally take down The Voice. They had their biggest, biggest year prior uh, at the Creative Arts last year, and The Voice still won. Um, yeah. Boy, I checked my predictions this weekend. I may change, <laughs> but right now I'm, I'm sticking with The Voice. Um, yeah. It just simply has the most viewers out of any of these six, just public. Um, yeah. So I, I'm going to stay with that. Uh, I might change by the weekend, but it, they fooled me last year. Mm -hmm. um, let's do the two variety categories because these we can we can move through pretty fast. If we didn't think uh, John Oliver and SNL were winning before this past weekend, they they proved yeah. it again that they're going to take those right. 
Oh, 100%. I mean, you could try to make an argument for Colbert, made in Portlandia, but let's be honest here. These two categories, they might as well not even um, announce them. They're already done. <laughs> They're locked. Jimmy Kimmel, I know a voter that voted for that, and um, the reasoning was it was the first year, I think it was back around last September, this is the episode he submitted to uh, uh, as well, um, where he really takes on the health care initiative. He had just... Yeah. His son had just had surgery, a brand new newborn, and he didn't need the health care, but he was talking about so many people in the country do. And then he spent the rest of the year coming back to that. And it was the first time in the 10 plus years he's been on television that he's really taken a stand. He's not very a political talk show no, host. So that's right. He really took a stand this year, and I'd love to see him up there. I would too, but, you know, and just think about the liberal Hollywood elites, as they, as some people like to call them, uh, that most of these voters are. I think that Colbert has done a very good job if you like anti-Trump or political humour. He has been at the forefront of that. So there could be some argument for him too. But uh, let's be honest, I think these two categories are pretty certain. Yeah, John Oliver even won picture editing, and that's a show where a guy's sitting at a desk. So I think I think it's pretty pretty safe. And then SNL dominated like they always do. Let's do um, all drama. We'll do all the drama in a few minutes. But limited series. I've got Versace. I'm not looking back. Yeah, I just switched this morning. I've been, I had Godless for a long time. Just uh, probably wishful thinking, but I think Versace is probably going to take that one out too. Uh, lead actress in a limited series or movie. Uh, what do you have? Excuse me. What do you have there? It looks like Laura Dern is pretty pretty locked for that one. Um, she's going to repeat her win from the supporting category last year for Big Little Lies. I think though Jessica Biel and even Regina King have a very slight chance. It's Regina King surprises people. You know, she's already won two Emmys for American Crime, not a very well watched show, and Jessica Biel was just stunning in The Sinner. And I'm just hoping there could be a surprise here. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to ruin one of my predictions for it. <laughs> so. I'm going Laura Dern, but this category, all six, other than Godless, the other five really aren't Emmy magnets this year. They're not. The, you know, they didn't perform very well anywhere else. So yeah. the thing is, if there's going to be a category where we're just picking our jaws up off the floor, this might be the one because. You've got some real Emmy favorites in this category. Just people, if they even if they didn't watch the program, they love Edie Falco. They love yeah. Regina King. They love Sarah Paulson. Laura Dern right. got her first Emmy last year. Uh, Michelle Dockery's had a bunch of nominations and is way outside of her comfort zone from Downton Abbey. And then Jessica Biel, um, you know, was probably the most most transformative of all the characters. So this could be one where I, you could make the case for all six. But again, I think that helps Laura Dern being the front runner. Absolutely. And and such an exciting category to watch. I'm very much looking forward to that announcement. But yes, let's just go with Laura Dern because it's a safest bet. Safest bet. Now I'm not safest bet here on lead actor. I've I know that Darren Chris is everybody's favorite and also the front runner, but there's just been a sneaking suspicion for me ever since the announcements that Benedict Cumberbatch was gonna do this. And it's one of those, remember a few years ago when you and I had Damian Lewis, his first year on Home yeah. and nobody else had him. And we were just like, you know, we'd rather be wrong at this point and keep our keep our um, uh, knowledge here of this episode and how impactful it is. I'd rather be wrong at this point than, than, uh, than just switch over to the easy one with Brian Cranston. And we were right. And that's yeah. what I'm feeling on Benedict. And I, I want to hear your choice, but I'll tell you why in a moment. I'm so excited that you that you're staying with him because we talked about this a few weeks ago and I've been thinking about it as well because I'm thinking about how it will, I'm probably you're probably going to give the same reason I'll let you say it because I think I know what you're going to say and well, I, I Jesse, don't know that everybody had Patrick Melrose getting in for limited series so that's no. that's a plus for them that 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 it got in there and quite honestly I mean some of these are film stars Jeff Daniels certainly is Antonio Banderas is but nobody's a bigger film star out of these six, excuse me, uh, seven, six, that's right, than Benedict is right now. And he used that to his advantage when he surprisingly won for, for Sherlock. And it was a very similar situation. He beat a strong frontrunner in Mark Ruffalo, and that was a project, uh, Normal Heart, that went on to win TV movie. So 
and also a Ryan Murphy show, right? Like, a Ryan Murphy. So that's yeah. why I'm just wondering if this might happen again. And you're going to love this. You know, he couldn't be there the year of Sherlock, but I have confirmed with uh, his people that he is coming this weekend. Oh, great. So I just think the stars are lining up for him. But yet, I haven't put him in my first spot yet. I just put Darren Chris in there. I've had Jesse Clemens for weeks. I know Jesse Clemens is not likely, but I, I just thought for me it was the most, it was a performance that completely stunned me. And I know USS Callister did quite well at the Creative Arts and he's I'm thinking that this he's I've still got him in second. I've got Darren Chris in first, but I'm not convinced of that Darren Chris. And so that's why I'm I'm really glad that you've argued for Benedict Cumberbatch, because I think that's actually a very, very good one. And I may just follow your lead, thinking about how we still to this day have to lord it over everybody in the world that we picked, um, you know, that very, very um, successful pick for that, you know, the homeland streak. We saw it coming and uh, we have to let people re be reminded of that constantly. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we, we're um, needing to, we've got 10 minutes here, uh, okay. 26 categories in 26 minutes, supporting actress in a limited series or movie. I think it's Judith Light and I'm pretty, pretty happy with that choice. Okay, that's an interesting one. I've actually got Merritt Weaver for the time being, but I don't know if Godless is really as popular as I think it is, and I may switch to Judith Light. If anyone's going to win from there, I don't think it will be Penelope Cruz. I think it would probably most likely be Judith Light. So I'm, you're probably right. I just hope Merritt gives a better speech than last time. If she, I know. <laughs> uh, seven people on supporting actor, and I've got... Um, where did it go? I've got... No, this one's easy to me. Sometimes when people get two nominations, they win one of them. And I don't think yeah. anybody is probably voting for Jeff Daniels on Looming Tower. So I think because I think they really knew that they were voting for him here for Godless. Yeah, and it's another transformative performance. He, he goes against type. I think he's got this one wrapped up. I'd love to see John Lee was on. I mean, that's not going to probably happen. So we're going with Jeff Daniels. I agree. Okay. And then movie, mini, uh, let's do writing first. Uh, writing, I'm going with Black Mirror, USS Callister. I think um, they could probably do that again. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's winning writing and just like it did last year, and then directing on a um, movie or limited series. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and go for uh, David Lynch for Twin Peaks. I know that that wasn't really well received, but I just I need to have a couple of choices with that are a little bit off center, and I'm I'm hoping that will happen. I'd love to see him win an Emmy again. What about you? This one's pretty easy for me. I would love for it to be David Lynch. He did 19 hours. Nobody else did anything like that. Uh, they always, you know, on, on any of these limited series, they, they split up the directing duties. So I would love to see that, but it's pretty easy for me. It's, it's um, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. They did it, uh, the same guy did it, Alex did it for Greece, and yeah. it'll be that apple in the barrel of oranges. Everything else is your typical movie or limited series, not typical, but, but more in the, the traditional sense. And this is going to yeah. really stand out. And it way overperformed on uh, Sunday night. Yeah. Yeah. So Good I think point. that one's pretty easy. Okay. Let's do drama. Uh, here on drama, let's start. Uh, let's let's hold the big ones for the end. Tell me who okay. you've got for writing on drama. Um, I'm going with the Americans. I think I think you're in the same boat, right? I think that they're going to yeah. finally win an Emmy for writing. It feels very much to me like Friday Night Lights winning for yes. its finale and uh, not being really predicted by a lot of people. Um, I think this is the biggest chance for the Americans to win on uh, – on uh, next Monday night. What about directing? Um, I have uh, Carrie Spogland for The Handmaid's Tale. I just think it's going to win again, although I could see The Crown or either of the Game of Thrones um, uh, choices win as well. Uh, it's, uh, that, this one's tough. Game of Thrones has gotten over vote splitting before, but it really didn't have as much visual competition as it does now with some of these episodes. Um, so the Crown overperformed this weekend. It won casting and some other yeah. stuff. Stephen Daldry is the biggest film director in the group. I could see that. Um, I don't know that they, I don't know how many he directed, but I don't know that this was one of their best episodes of the year, though. I, I'll go Handmaid's Tale because they won it last year. And I think they'll get beyond the, the vote splitting of Game of Thrones. Okay, let's do supporting on drama. Let's start. Oh, both of them are so tough. Let's start with supporting actress. So, like, I'm going with Yvonne Stravsky. I think um, her performance was the most talked about. The vote splitting is real and it could hurt her. And therefore, Vanessa Kirby, Tandy Newton could probably take this out, even Lena Headey. But um, I am going with Yvonne. I just can't, I can't not pick her. I just, I'm still thinking about her performance as Serena Joy on The Handmaid's Tale. 
We talked about repeat winners, and I only have two out of the four drama acting categories being repeats. So, and that includes this one. I, I'm going Ann Dowd. I just, um, you know, Alexis Bledel's way younger. I don't think they're going that direction, even though she won guest star last year. And Yvonne's sort of in the, in the middle. Um, I just, uh, Ann Dowd surprised so many of us last year, and you love her to death. So, um, <laughs> I just, I think... I don't think it's Millie. I don't think it's Game of Thrones. I don't think it's The Crown. I could see Westworld with Tandy Newton, but they just don't ever win anything at the main ceremony so far. So I'm going and Dowd and, and hedging my bets. Wow. Well, I'd love to see that happen again. She gave the best um, moment at the Emmys last year, so let's see what happens. But over on the actor side, mate, this is where I'm going to roll the dice. I'm rolling it a couple of times in the drumming categories. I'm going with Matt Smith. I'm just putting my cards on the table and saying that if they think about the performances in these shows, there is no reason why he could not take this. And the crown overperformed in nominations and last weekend. He's Doctor Who. W why can't he not be? I think any of these six can win this category. I really do. It's it's a mix of people that have been there before and people that haven't been there before. So we don't have John Lithgow, so that doesn't help us at all. I, I'm actually going on a limb. Who is the only one of the six that we know they like? Yeah, yeah. I'm going Peter Dinklage. None of yeah. these other guys that have been in here and the ones that haven't been in here have proven they can win it. And, well, um, that's the lazy vote, kind of like the lazy vote, like with Kate McKinnon. Uh, that's what I was saying. Right. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, and that's the smart bet. If, if people are going to copy predictions, copy Chris's. Don't copy mine, because I'm not expecting to be up at the top this year. You I finished just, first I, on the creative arts. Don't <laughs> among all the and I finished first okay. last year. We got exactly four minutes left in four, five categories. So, okay, we're doing, um, we're doing um, drama, actress. I think I struggled in the summer because so many people in this category have passionate fan bases, not yeah. just love the show but love Claire Foy, love Sandra Oh, love Carrie Russell. But after the weekend, I think the fact that there are so many competitors that are, that are right below her, I think Elizabeth Moss wins this. Yeah, this one's a really tough one. I, you know, I've already written my article about why I think Claire Foy is going to win. Check it out. I think I'm still sticking with her. Two-time SAG winner Claire Foy is probably going to eke this one out um, because I don't know if uh, Elizabeth Moss is that popular to win again. She got the Emmy that she was well overdue last year, and I'm thinking that Claire Foy will just take this one, but Sandra Oh could do it, Tatiana Maslany could win again, Kerry Russell's her final chance, Evan Rachel Wood, so popular, so wonderful in Westworld. W one of the best categories of the night. Very excited. One of the most exciting, for sure. That's why what all you just said in that sentence, that's why I think Elizabeth Moss can hold everybody else off. Yeah. Um, lead actor, uh, I'm going, I had Sterling for a while. I switched over to Matthew Reese. I'm going to hold with Matthew Reese and I'll tell you why after you tell me who you're picking. I'm going, I'm also holding with Matthew Reese. I just, and that seems it's, he's really started to gain momentum over the last few weeks in terms of what we're people are leading. Um, I think the vote splitting is going to hurt Sterling and Milo and, uh, and the same goes with Jeffrey and Ed. And I don't think Jason's winning this. That's why I'm pretty much going with Matthew. See, last year, vote splitting happens when people can't make, they love a show and they can't make up their mind over which one. It does, you can overcome it when there's an obvious choice. Like yeah. um, Samira Wiley was going to beat those other two if a Handmaid's Person won this past weekend. Um, Sterling, a couple of years ago, was up against two other OJ, but he was going to win that. Um, here's the problem with Sterling this year. I think he was the overwhelming choice last year. And if they wanted to go This Is Us, they were going with him against Milo. Milo was really lucky to get in. This year, though, Milo had as good or better of a season. So yeah. my feeling is it's real vote splitting this year. As many people, more people will vote for Milo this year than they did last year. Let's put it that way. So I think that's going to hurt Sterling. And I think the beneficiary is Matthew Reese. Totally agree with that. And drama series in our last two minutes. Um, you, you tell me first. Well, look, this one is the big one for me. It's the one that I'm most excited about. And I think Handmaid's Tale is going to win it again. I just think the momentum's there. It had a great second season. It's critically acclaimed. Everything going on in 
the culture at the moment. I think it's just going to get it over the line. I know Game of Thrones did very well over the weekend, but that, I don't think that really matters. I, I think the Handmaid's Tale's got this. What about you? I know a lot of people switched over in the past 36 hours to Game of Thrones because it won so much over the weekend. But look, you, you can't, that's expected. You have to look at what are, what are you expecting, what are you not expecting. Right. It's always going to dominate creative arts awards, and you can't necessarily go by just that. Um, yeah. I think it aired a year ago, over a year ago, and Handmaid's aired in the spring and early summer. I just and, and the Me Too movement is still in people's minds. I just think it's Handmaid's, uh, which it may not have episodes next time around. So Game of Thrones might win on its last chance next Emmys. Yeah, totally agree with that. Well, 26 categories, 26 minutes. We always love doing these, you and I. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. We are, I'm gonna wait about 20 seconds. Nope, there we are. That's 26 minutes exactly. And uh, everybody get in and make your predictions and keep following all of the predictions. They'll be changing over the next six days. So keep up with what's going on and we'll see you again next time.